Hello, welcome back to the workshop and Project Kermit. Now as I'm sure many of you already know, welding, like I've been doing a lot of welding on this, welding can induce distortion. For instance in this section where I've done a whole load of welding, there's a new piece here, um, there's a new piece there, there's a new piece there, that's a new piece, and mm, where is it? this whole piece here is new. If I'd done say this section here all in one hit, I'd be pumping loads of heat in there and that would make the metal expand because I'm pumping energy into there it would get bigger and expand out and then as it cools it would contract again and that could pull this part of the chassis over relative to the rest of it and of course that distortion could happen in every bit where I've done any welding and one of the other things that can cause distortion on a chassis is practice of driving into walls and things like that, which I know has happened on uh, more than one occasion with this poor thing. Now I've tried to mitigate against distortion by spreading out the welds, but nonetheless, between previous uh, driving experiences that you may have had and all this work that I've done on it, there may be distortion. And of course this won't be super accurate what I'm doing here, but it'll give me some idea of how bad it is. What I need to do is to chock up the back here until that level is level. And then I'm going to see how it is relative, how the front is relative to the back. It's held on two points at the back and then down here I've put this front cross member on top of a piece of round bar so that it's held in the middle of the chassis at this end. So that should mean now we can detect if the front of the chassis is out of true compared to the rear. If they're both level then it's nice and straight. If it's skewing that way or that way there's work to be done. <laughs> so, like I say, I've not done this yet. Ooh. Well, that's a mile around. <laughs> I must say, I thought it would be a bit out, but not quite that bad. So you can see there that the bubble here, and like I say, it's not going to be perfectly accurate, um, partly because I'm just eyeing up a spirit level but also because the level has to sit on top of this seam on both sides and you can see there the seam's actually been knocked in a bit but nonetheless I'm going to now lift up the level and see how much I've got to do to correct that yeah so <laughs> that's about half an inch yes it is. I not think it would be that bad. What I'm going to do now is um, shim under this to bring that up to level as near as I can judge it and then we'll actually put a number on how bad it is. So I've shimmed it up with a 16mm square bar there and as a result, if I can hold the camera steady, you should see we're pretty much level. In fact, if I pull back, yeah, you can see the difference between the, the level being level and this front cross member here being pulled down that way. What I'm interested now is to know where that starts, whether it's just that front end or whether it starts, say, back here. So bear in mind that is straight across there. Here, most of that movement has occurred yeah. so most of that change is between here and here which is interesting the distortion has come at an area before I've actually done any work so I'm totally sure that's managed to happen unless it's, it's been rear-ended at some point but nonetheless I'm going to try and do what I can to rectify it. 
what I want to do now is take it off of those stands and chuck up the front instead and repeat the repeat the process. <laughs> And I can use this as the starting point. So this is currently where the midline of the front axle should be. That's as far forward as I can go. Because obviously the dumb eyes aren't there yet. Yeah, so that's fine. Just a tiny bit of movement there. The whole of this half is fine. It's just some there's a big twist in this area here. The other thing I want to check while I'm here is the squareness of this chassis. So normally on there's something nice and simple like a gate, I just measure corner to corner, check the diagonals. Here, um, I'm going to try and do something similar. Let's see what I can that's about seven mil difference in the diagonal there. <laughs> that seems like quite a lot. If it was a gate, I wouldn't be very happy with it. <laughs> yeah, so that's just over a quarter of an inch difference in the squareness and um, 5 eighths or 16 mil difference more or less in the twist. Now, neither of those two findings are very reassuring at all. Uh, Hmm. Right, what I'm going to do is going to have a cup of tea and I think about this. <laughs> I'll be back in a moment. Okay, I've had a cuppa and while I was at it, I had a read of the manual. So this is the actual service manual from Land Rover. And in here, there's a whole section on um, checking the uh, alignment of the chassis. So they've detailed how to do it here with the um, body still on the chassis actually. So you have to set it out on the floor and then drop plumb lines down a mark on the floor itself and then check the diagonals. But essentially it's the same as what I did here. Now to my astonishment <laughs> they say to check the diagonals um, like this. So not even the full length of the chassis. Um, if the, the diagonals are um, 9.5 mil or less, then it's fine. <laughs> so that seems to me to be an amazing, an amazing tolerance. If I'd made a gate that was that far out, it wouldn't open and close properly. So I've measured a much longer diagonal than that and found there to be a seven or eight mil difference from the two. So we are within spec. It's not very good <laughs> but it's within spec of the factory manual. Now the twist in there, that's a different matter. Um, that's, I'm going to try and sort that out. If I can sort it out now, I've only welded the top of this, there's still plenty of metal missing from the underneath and from the sides. So this is going to be my best chance to try and distort it back to take the distortion out, if you see what I mean. So we've got a five ton ratchet strap 
and that's pinned to the corner of the bench. This jack's a bit wibbly. I'm going to put this big block there. The nice thing about chain is it's very, very strong. slack on the chain. Now the idea is to push it over where it needs to be and then when I take the tension off it drops back to where I want it, i.e. square. Well, plenty of pressure going on down there. Take the pressure off see if anything's changed. I doubt it. Like I say, if it is moving, I want to do it Push it off the jack. Let's check the front. Still, yeah, very near the level. Does this change the tool here? No, no real change yet. Put a bit more pressure on it this time. If anything dramatic is going to happen, it will be that corner there. That's where all the pressure is through that uh, ratchet strap. Or tension, I should say. Obviously, this entire setup is very reliant on my table being very strong. And it is strong, but I never anticipated doing this with it. So. I'm keeping back from the chassis just in case it flies up in the air. But it's still fine, nothing seems to be about to let go. So that's quite a lot of tension in there now. Okay, I'm going to take the tension off again and see if it's moved. Probably still hasn't moved, I'm probably going to need to pump it up more. Quite level up there, so we'll see what it does here. Ooh, that is. So you should be able to see it starting to go like that. Let me point the camera down. This foot here is now off the ground. That means we're now starting to pull the, the, um, the table, twisting the table around. That's annoying. Alright, level at the front. Any change here. Yeah. So we're now down to, I would say, just under 10 millimeters of twist, down from possibly 15 to begin with.
it's in interesting noises it's making. There's about that much gap, so that's really pulling up. So I'm holding the camera uh, level there, and you can see that the table has come up plenty. And if we get the camera level again, the front of the chassis is moved because um, the whole table's come up, but the back corner there has moved a lot more. Now it's making some interesting noises from around here, which is good because that's where the problem area is. So back down on the deck. So that's pretty good there. Okay. The twist is down to about two millimeters. That's brilliant. So we've gone from roughly fifteen. 15 or 16 millimeter of distortion down to two. That's well within. <laughs> that's well within tolerance. But I'm also personally quite happy with that. Crikey, that was an effort. So I'm calling that a major win. I'm. I'm very happy with the amount of uh, movement we managed to get out of that. So to finish up, I'm going to check the diagonals again, just out of interest, to see if they've changed at all in moving it. I suspect they had, but we'll see. So this diagonal that I'm measuring, I'm basically hooking it round a, a fitting on the last cross member. It's not the rear cross member, because obviously that's over there. Um, but it's just a place that I can measure it the same on both sides of the chassis. And then I'm going to measure to the centre point of where the front shop goes. And then over the other side. Two, nine, two. So that's four, isn't it? Four millimeters. <laughs> yes, excellent. So by taking the, nearly all of that twist out, it's resolved the um, discrepancy in the, in the squareness as well. Whew. Well, that was exciting. <laughs> so there, that was a roller coaster of emotion. I went from being, oh God, it's way out, to then finding out from the manual that that's actually pretty much of intolerance, to then bringing it back to Something that's pretty good actually. Two millimetres difference from one end to the other, that's fine. Now what I've got to do is keep that accuracy <laughs> with all the rest of the welding I've got to put in. So I've got to do all that welding that I did on top, um, it's probably the same again on the bottom. I've got to put the holes in the sides and then of course I've got to put on all the outriggers. So if I can do all of that without putting any more distortion into it, uh, that will be good. So I guess it goes to show that you don't need fancy kit or even much of an idea of what you're doing <laughs> in order to straighten out a chassis. Um, just a jack, a uh, ratchet strap, a chain and a very sturdy workbench. <laughs> but for now, I can have a couple of these in order. <sighs> I'll be with that.